guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Roxanne. We are backstage at 2000 Trees Festival Anti Flag on the lineup. Chris number two joins me now. How are you, sir? Very well. Um, we were kind of out of the fire into the frying pan this morning. We arrived, they gave us acoustic guitars. We went into the woods, which was a new experience for, uh, for uh, four punks from Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Um, uh, and we had a great time, and now we're just kind of catching up. There's so many people that we know and love here, and it's our, other than the slam dunk September experience, yeah. uh, which was on hella lockdown, um, it's our first like real, like hugging people is acceptable today. And yeah. so uh, it's happening in waves. Uh, which is why I'm a little bit late, I apologize. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, don't you dare apologize because this is the lovely thing. It's where I've been starting with everybody, really, is, like you say, just the joy of being back, like, to a proper festival season. Obviously, we did see it at Slammy last year, which was great fun and everything, but, yes, it does feel like a different atmosphere now that everything is a bit more open. And also, just being able to come back to the UK, you know we've always embraced you guys in that live saying as well. Well, I, I was thinking about it because, you know, we've, we've had our struggles and ups and downs in the clubs in the UK. And whether, you know, uh, there's this theme for this tour uh, for us, which is our, our drummer, Pat, who's probably the most holistic Buddhist version of any of us in the right. band. He will often tell me that expectation is the path to suffering. And I believe because I held up English punk in such a high regard right. coming from the East Coast and, you know, Anti-Flag wouldn't be a band without The Clash, yeah. without Crass, without Exploited. And so I think that when we started to come here and it was difficult, and then we would have a, re a Leeds and Reading experience that was like, holy shit, where are all these people when we come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And so I, it took us a long time to recognize that those two entities are different animals. Mm. And um, now we really embrace the festival culture in the UK. And like like you said, Slam Dunk last year was massive for us. I, you know, our acoustic set was like insane I, at two o'clock in the, in the woods again, you know? So I, I just really like, have taken that expectation and turned it around into, you know, we're here for the relationships. We're here on the day that Boris Johnson resigns. <laughs> uh, there's a lot Wild. of a lot of um, uh, important historical things that are happening around the world, and to be in the UK while that's all going down, I think is. Um, it feels like it's important and it feels like uh, there's value to it this moment. And so we're just a voice in that moment and, and, and we're grateful to be here and grateful that anybody comes to watch whenever they do. Yeah, and funnily enough, given today's events, a bit more of a party vibe. I know I'm partying this evening. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. Um, I want to mention some of the stuff you guys kind of got to do while, you know, everything was shut down, everything. A brilliant little collaboration with, you know, not just Tom Morello on there, which is always so good to see, not just Marsh from the Skins, um, but one of the artists that we've absolutely championed for a long Long, long time which is Dwayne I uh, absolutely love Dwayne I think what he's been doing is so so interesting tell me about those collaborations really and, and putting all that together yeah so so it's funny because um, a friend of ours who we worked on uh, the record American Fall with he went back to one of the songs off of that record and and unbeknownst to me while I was writing a song that I thought could be impactful or or at least encapsulate what it felt like to be isolated not um, really like not having that camaraderie and community and uh, collectiveness that assert like serves a purpose of letting you know you're not alone when that was ripped from us during the pandemic, and then you had the killing of George Floyd, a lot of us were looking for a place to direct that yeah. frustration and direct that attention, which it commanded at the time. And um, so I started writing a song, and unbeknownst to me, uh, our friend Stevie started writing a song with one of our riffs from the last record, and we were like, well, what can we do? How can we put these together? And so it turned into volume one and two yeah. of A Dying Plea. And uh, uh, it, it just was, was so perfect because Stevie was doing that. I was writing what ended up being the volume one kind of rock version. And I had a friend who lives in DC um, who played in one of my favorite bands of all time called Trial by Fire. And he plays in a, in a new band called uh, Free Children of Earth. And they're, you know, Free Children is a really like DIY, super political punk band. And he sent me a poem 
which is the chorus of a dying plea. And he wow. just texted it to me. And I was like, I'm writing this song. Can we do this together? And I was like, okay, this is collaborative. So how do we continue that? And then, you know, for us, in 1999, Tom Morello became our spiritual guru, and he's regretted it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so he's the next phone call, sure. and he plays a, a tremendous guitar solo that he literally recorded with his phone in front of his amp and right. sent it to me, and it's brilliant. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Marcia obviously was a friend from, from, you know, we did a fireball tour together and some other things like that, and it's like, well, I'm interested in this being a global conversation. So bringing her to that table was important. And then we met Dwayne making American Fall, which is where that initial riff came from. And so I was like, well, this is kind of perfect. He was cutting his teeth and learning how to develop his sound as our band was entering a new chapter. And I, I kind of think that what has happened since 2017 with Anti Flag is a new era of the band. And uh, it just seemed appropriate to bring him in. And uh, yeah, he's crushing right now. Yeah. His newest tracks are incredible. And we're just, you know, glad to be like a cobblestone on his trajectory, which is way north. Of yeah, Planet. really cool to see that kind of develop and capture these people, those kind of moments, absolutely for sure. Really, really cool. Uh, got to ask you before I let you go and enjoy this weekend, man, what's next? Are we working on more new music? Are we building more new stuff up? How are yeah. you feeling about all that stuff? At the yeah, the new record's finished. Oh, wow. Um, uh, it's a concept record, which is the first time we've ever done a concept record. And, and, and uh, we're going to announce the first song here and the album in a few weeks. And there are eight singles that all have another collaboration. And I think that that's a, oh, wow. a part of the um, pandemic experience for us is we didn't want to re release a record in a traditional here's two songs and then here's the album and then we tour on it and then we forget about it. Yeah. We, we want to embrace the moment that is in front of us. And um, there are a lot of issues in the world. And so the concept of the record loosely or quickly, I should say, is we're tracing back cultural shifts, political policies, corporate influences that led to the issues we face today. Because the thought process on that is simply, if you know the battle you're fighting, it's easier to win. And so I'm hopeful that with this record, it will shine a light on some of the things, you know, like whether it's what you're facing now. We're excited that Boris Johnson is gone, but don't think for a second these ghouls that want to gut the NHS or, or yeah. let refugees die on a daily basis, they're not going anywhere. And the conversation for us in America is about gaining uh, uh, healthcare for all people, gaining universal education. And people don't know that you know, things like the climate crisis. BP had a campaign of ads in the 70s to discredit their own science that was finding out. So it's like, it's not that di dig of a hole you need to, to dig to find out where these things came from. So that's kind of the loose idea of the record and um, releasing it almost a song at a time was is a new strategy for us. It's something we've never done. Uh, I don't know, you know, We've made a lot of records. We're just trying something different this time. Always good to do, though. Always yeah. good. Keeps it interesting. I know you won't want to give too much away, but I've got to push you for at least a hint or two uh, some of these collaborators. What can you tell me? It ranges from my favorite folk artist, uh, Trey Burt, um, to Tim from Rise Against. Oh, fantastic. To... Campino from a band from Germany called Die Totenhosen, who are one of the biggest bands of all time out of Germany. They're on their 40th anniversary. So you have this spectrum of new school. You know, I know that you guys at Rock Sound love Pink Shift. Oh, yeah. Ashrita's on there too. That's great. Yeah. What a lovely moment that is for them as well. And again, another artist that's just on the up and up at the beginning of their career. That's so great. I, when I heard their, I heard their first song that they dropped during the pandemic and I wrote them immediately and I was like things are going to happen for you quickly if you want to talk to somebody who stepped in a lot of dog shit along this path yeah. I'll tell you we're not the step and uh, we've been great friends ever since oh that's so lovely man yeah. so lovely to be able to kind of lend a helping hand to that kind of stage in their career that's really really nice yeah and I mean they don't need our help they're gonna dominate on their it. own but uh, if we can help them avoid some mistakes uh, that's always the, the that's the 
That's the only privilege you get with age. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. It really is. Uh, Chris, such a lovely, lovely to see you, man. Lovely to see you back in the UK. Enjoy these shows. And yeah, we'll see you again soon, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? Peace, y'all. Good to see you, Chris. Everybody.